Hello again. As always, I'm really pleased you're here. In this particular video, I'm going to show you how the fuel adjustment screws work on a two-stroke carburetor, mainly on chainsaws. And I'm aware that there's already enough information on YouTube of how to adjust these to get the correct running of your chainsaw. But this video is different in the fact that it shows you what's happening to get that correct running, what's going on inside the carburetor, how it's fueling, and how the adjustment screws affect this. And I'm showing you this because it's one thing to do something to correct something, but if you have an underlying knowledge of why you're doing it and what's happening while you're doing it, you can do that job that little bit better. And between you and me, after watching this video, you might just have quite a bit more theoretical knowledge than the guys in your local repair shop. So let's get to it. Okay, so first a very quick explanation. As the carburetor is supplying fuel to the engine, fuel is drawn in through the fuel pump area, through the needle valve and in to flood the metering area. And the full version of the video that explains this process in more detail is in the link in the description below. Because in this video I'm going to keep it specific to how the fueling works on the adjustment settings. So when the needle's back, fuel floods into the metering chamber beneath the metering diaphragm. And so it was that that allowed this fuel to flow in to the metering chamber. And now that the fuel is here, suction pressure from the main jet is drawing the fuel in. And on this carburetor, that's down there. Now flowing down towards the carburetor's venturi, it passes a small hole on the vertical face. And another stream of fuel is drawn in from this hole and added to the fuel that's already inside here. This is the fuel coming from the high, or the H, jet fuel hole. And the way this gets here is through this hole here at the top of the carburetor, near to the main jet hole. And on this carburetor, that's this little tiny hole right here. And so what happens is, in addition to the main jet hole, fuel is also drawn into this hole. And as it's drawn through, it enters a special fuel vein with this opening on its vertical face. Fuel doesn't flow in here. On the contrary, what we see is an appendage protruding outwards. This is indeed the very tip of the high jet adjustment screw. And of course, as we know, this screw can be screwed inwards, which makes the very tip of the fuel screw move out further into the fuel way. And if the screw is turned in until it comes to a stop, then this could be a complete block of the fuel going down this fuel tube. So screwing this screw back outwards will mean creating more of a gap in this tube, allowing more fuel to go through, until eventually this will reach a maximum. So whatever amount of fuel passes through, it travels down this fuel hole to meet the main fuel flow of the main jet. And so here it is being drawn out of that fuel tube into the main fuel flow, and we can see it a little clearer like this. So the main jet and the correct running of the carburetor and the engine is sensitive to the amount of fuel coming out of this owl, and it does rely on it. And as we've already seen, this fuel supplementation is adjustable by the fuel screw. The more the screw is screwed in, the less fuel comes out here, so the overall fuel amount available to the engine is less, or the fueling is leaner in other words. And the more the screw is screwed out, the more fuel comes out here, and therefore it's fueling richer. So with this screw, we can make the carburetor run rich or lean. And because at the moment we're talking about the H screw, meaning the high, so meaning high revs, then any adjustment on this screw will make the high revs of the engine rich or lean. And just to be a little clearer about that, let's look into this a little further, using my cross-sectional model of a two-stroke carburetor. As the operator pulsates on the throttle trigger, the throttle butterfly opens and closes periodically. But when opened to its maximum, it allows a maximum flow rate of air through the carburetor to the engine, drawing out maximum fuel from the main jet. From this point where the engine's running well, turning the high screw anti-clockwise outwards, allowing more fuel out of the main jet, would mean there's too much fuel now going into the engine, and the engine's now struggling and would eventually stop. Essentially, the engine wasn't equipped to combust that amount of fuel, and it choked it. 
From the engine running well again, adjusting the H-screw inwards clockwise, reducing the amount of fuel coming from the main jet, means that the engine can combust the slight reduction of fuel much easier so the engine revs are raised. But as the screw is screwed in further and less fuel comes through, there isn't enough fuel there for combustion and so engine revs reduce. Eventually, in most cases, the engine will stop. Just to clarify, this high level of revving, by the way, is usually considered as over-revving and not generally thought of as actually a good thing. And that's because as there's a reduced amount of fuel going into the engine, of course with it being a two-stroke, there's also a reduced amount of lubricating oil. And so the engine running like this would have less lubrication and over time could produce more wear. So it's much better to have an engine that's running more like this. So it's slightly richer in fuel, not too rich so the engine doesn't run right, but it's slightly richer in order to have a better lubrication of the engine. And so it's the fine tuning of the rich and lean fueling is to the reason why this fuel is added in to the mainstream of fuel in this way. And they both head down together towards the induction tube or the venturi of the carburettor. And as they do, the air rushing through the venturi can be seen on its way into the engine as it passes the end of the main jet. And it's at this point that the fuel molecules in front of us can be seen joining the airflow. As it joins, it's instantly hit by the air and separated in what's known as atomized. And now it represents more of a mist than a fluid as it's pulled in through to combust in the engine. So the fuel has just gone down there, out here and through into the engine. But as well as the fuel being drawn down the main jet and the high jet, it's also drawn down this little hole here. This is the low jet hole. And on this particular carburettor, that's underneath where the meter and lever sits, a little tiny hole right here. Although existing for the fine tuning of idling speed, the suction pressure from the induction tube below draws a certain amount of fuel in through here all the time the engine is running, whether it's at idle or at high speed. Now when I say adjustment for the idling, I don't actually mean the idling adjustment screw, which sets the speed of idling. Instead, the low jet screw adjustment, which is what I'm talking about of course, sets the rich or lean fuel mixture when the engine is idling. But when the fuel is drawn down into this hole, we see that once in there, its general principles are very much the same as the high jet fuel hole. Because very much like the high jet fuel screw, the low jet fuel screw also extends its tip right into the fuel way. And of course, just like the high jet screw, the more the low jet screw is turned inwards, the more its tip protrudes out into the fuel way. And the more this happens, the more it blocks off the fuel. And the more it's screwed outwards, the more it retracts out of the fuel way, thus allowing more fuel to pass through. And so when the fuel screw is set correctly and the desired amount of fuel is allowed to pass through, it travels down the fuel way into a special compartment. So if we look at it from being inside this compartment and at the moment it's empty, we can see the fuel now flowing in. And so it fills this area, but what area are we actually talking about? Where is this? Well, right next to the low jet fuel hole, there is a core plug or a Welsh plug. And underneath that Welsh plug is this compartment that's just been filled. And having a look on this carburettor that's had the core plug removed, the fuel has gone down the low jet fuel hole, through the fuel way, out through the small hole in this corner where it comes in and floods the compartment. And so with the core plug in place, this compartment underneath is constantly being filled as the carburettor runs. And it's the suction pressure of the induction tube which draws that fuel out of that compartment to be used in the engine on idling revs. And as I've previously mentioned, even though some of this fuel comes out of here, whether it's idling speed or maximum revs, it's the idling speed that's sensitive to the fuel flow from these three holes. And if we take this torch and shine through these little holes and have a look in the induction tube, you can clearly see that all three have a direct route to there. And depending on the position of the low jet screw will depend on how much fuel is allowed to flow into this compartment to be used down in the induction tube below at idling speed. So this is why the idling speed is sensitive to the amount of fuel coming out of these three holes. 
because at idling speed, when there's less suction pressure going in through the induction tube, it's easier to draw the fuel out of these three holes than it is the main jet, because the main jet has a valving system. But for this carburetor, at idling speed, the fuel is drawn out of these three holes easily. And the amount that it's allowed to have at any particular time depends on the positioning of the low jet screw. If it's screwed in, there's less allowed to come out of there, so the idling speed is going to be more lean. And the more the screw is screwed out, the more fuel is allowed to flood in and be available for idling speed, and that will make it much richer. And at that I want to thank you for watching this video, which I hope you found interesting and educational. And if you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe, and I'll be back soon. Thank you for watching. <laughs>